Hey, what's going on guys? J Mac here. So I wanted to show you a 2.2 Jade Harvester build that I've been working on. Now, I'll tell you right now, I haven't put as much work into Jade as I probably should have on the PTR. I've been focusing on pets for the most part. So just keep in mind, this is a very uh, early build. It's in its early stages and can get much better and be min-maxed much better than it is currently, which is something that I'll do in the next few days. But anyways, the first thing we should do is talk about the changes to Jade Harvester. So one of the biggest changes is what they did to Spirit Walk. So Spirit Walk used to be 15 seconds. They reduced the cooldown to 12 seconds, and the ability does not start its cooldown until after its effects expire. So you hit Spirit Walk, and as you see, the cooldown has not started until the effect of Spirit Walk expired, then the cooldown starts. What that means basically is a lot of the way you would play Jade before is you would Spirit Walk into a group of mobs, and soul harvest and then while you were still in spirit walk you would kill a bunch of enemies with your soul harvest and that would then trigger grave injustice your passive that reduces cooldowns and therefore would be reducing the cooldown of said spirit walk while you're still in spirit walk now that doesn't work anymore if you spirit walk in and soul harvest as long as you're still in spirit walk anything you kill with grave injustice is not going to reduce the cooldown of Spirit Walk because the cooldown has not started yet. I know that's a little bit of a mouthful. Hopefully you guys get the gist of how that works and why it's so anti-synergistic with Jade currently. One thing you can try to do is run one of the two second Spirit Walks so that you can Spirit Walk in and then Horrify and then after the Spirit Walk ends, Soul Harvest. Something along those lines. Uh, it sounds like a lot of micromanaging to me. Probably not worth it in the end but it's something that i need to explore a little bit more for the time being i'm still just running jaunt the three second spirit walk all right so let's go over the other changes for jade so we got a new two-piece bonus when haunt lands on an enemy already affected by haunt it instantly deals 10 seconds worth of haunt damage huge single target buff it's going to be really good against rift guardians you're also going to see it ran as a two-piece bonus with haunt spam and pet builds as well then we've got a new four-piece bonus soul harvest gains the effect of every rune not terribly great. Most of the Soul Harvest runes aren't very good. Siphon's obviously the best one. Swallow Your Soul gives you mana, which is pretty nice. They revamped Languish to give you 30% armor, and then it reduces the movement speed of enemies by 80%. So those three are pretty good. Soul to Waste is completely garbage, and Vengeful Spirit pretty much is as well. It'll crit for like 30 million, and when your uh, Soul Harvest is hitting for like 2 to 4 billion, that's pretty much irrelevant. So... I don't know, I feel like they need to really revamp those runes. They did change uh, how much intelligence you get per stack with Soul Harvest. It used to be 2% per stack, now it's 3%. I think they should have been more focused on changing the runes themselves than how much intelligence you get from Soul Harvest, but it is what it is. The other change they made is the 6-piece bonus. So, before when you would Soul Harvest... You, it would take 30 seconds of your dots with Creeping Death. That's how much damage it would deal instantly, 30 seconds. Now it's taking 40 seconds of Creeping Death and dealing that damage instantly. So we get an extra 10 seconds, which is a good buff in damage every time you Soul Harvest when you have Haunt and Locust Swarm on the enemies. So pretty nice overall. It's going to just add to our clear speed as long as we can stay alive, which is the big question at the moment in Jade. Um, if you can stay alive, the damage is there. You got pretty good single target now, and a buff to your AoE clear, and that six-piece bonus buff is going to be a buff, uh, you know, to, to single target damage as well. So pretty nice changes overall, as, except for the Spirit Walk nerf. Everything else is definitely heading in the right direction. All right, we're gonna quickly go over the abilities. So Poison Spirit Haunt, we're running full uh, poison. This is going to give you 20% extra damage. You're going to be spamming this. We're running a Wormwood, so we don't have to cast Locust Swarm ourselves. So pretty much just spamming Haunt all the time. We're going to run Hex Jinx. This is uh, kind of the in the spot of Pestilence since we're running the Wormwood. Uh, they changed this this patch as well. This now hexes a group of enemies, which means it can hex pretty much an entire group of elites or champions. And it will even hex certain Rift Guardians at times. I'm not really sure like what dictates what Rift Guardian can be hexed or not, but I've seen a few be hexed. So, I'm not sure if that's intended or what, but it, it does work at times. Piranha's Paranado, to pull everything together, for the most part. Spirit Walk Jaunt, uh, for the movement speed, you know, to move into combat and out of combat. Obviously not as good as it used to be, but you still need it for the build. Soul Harvest Siphon, kind of already went over that. 
Horrify Stalker. This could be a frightening aspect if you wanted it to be, but honestly, the armor is probably going to end up being kind of irrelevant. I'd rather have the movement speed. It's mainly there for the movement speed and the immobilize, which is really important. Uh, you really need to, especially now that Jaunt got nerfed, you really need to uh, use your cooldowns properly. Use your crowd control properly, properly with Hex and Stalker and Paranado to make sure you stay alive. Spirit Vessel, really to come back to life more than anything else at this point, but it is also obviously reducing the cooldown of Spirit Walk, Horrify, and Soul Harvest is very relevant for the build too. Pierce the Veil for more damage. Grave Injustice for the cooldown reduction more than anything. We get some life and mana back as well though. And then the Creeping Death to increase our damage like we already talked about with the six piece bonus. All right, let's go over the gear. So this is kind of where things really start to vary from what you guys are used to running on the live servers currently. So let's go over the kind of obvious stuff first. So we got the Quetzalcoatl helmet, basically doubles your damage. Uh, Locust Storm and Haunt now deal their damage in half of the normal duration with Creeping Death. Basically get double damage out of this. As far as uh, the Jade pieces go, we've got Jade Shoulders. You want ideally Int, Vitality, Cooldown Reduction, and Haunt Damage. The chest piece, you definitely want haunt damage on. Three sockets, vitality, intelligence is the way to go. The pants, int vit armor. Uh, boots, int vit all res armor. Or you could have movement speed instead of all res. Either way is going to be fine. We've got the gloves. You really want to go main stat, crit damage, crit chance, cooldown reduction if you can on the gloves. That's going to be kind of your trifecta for Jade Harvester. And then... We've got the Ring of Royal Grandeur to get that six-piece bonus. Uh, on the Ring of Royal Grandeur, you want to get either CDR, crit chance, or crit damage. One of those three. So we've got the Wormwood Staff. You could definitely have 10% cooldown reduction here instead of 10% damage, which is probably going to end up being better overall. I was kind of toying around with just having as much damage as possible earlier today to see how it was, so I re-rolled this to 10% damage. But the 10% CDR is probably going to be better. And then we've got uh, strong arm bracers. You know, this is going to be triggered by Paranado. Pretty nice. You want poison damage and crit chance on there. I like the Countess Julia's Camillo quite a bit, mainly because it gets rid of just one thing that one shots you, which is Jailer. And I like that a lot. There's two things that are going to one shot you Jailer, Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm is still going to get you from time to time, potentially, and this alleviates the Jailer problem. Ideally, you would have poison damage, crit damage, crit chance, and a socket instead of the intelligence there. Then, as far as the new items go that we're running, so I'm running the Belt of Transcendence currently. Summon a Fetish Sycophant when you hit with a Mana Spender. So we're going to have about 15 Fetishes pretty much at all times, because every time we hit something with Haunt, it's going to summon a Fetish. These are going to deal pretty significant single target damage. They're going to crit for around 10 million or so, and they're going to tank for you more importantly. With the change to Jaunt and how much survivability you lose, I think this is pretty important. Now, there's definitely other belts you can run. You can run the new Haunting Girdle. Haunt releases one extra spirit. You can obviously run Witching Hour or Vigilante Belt like you used to, like you guys are doing on live servers currently, if you want to. But I think the 15 fetishes, it gives you a lot of damage, and it gives you a lot of... Uh, they, they just soak up damage for you. They're meat shields, and they tank stuff. All right, and then the last item and the most important one, the Convention of Elements. So this reads, gain 185% increased damage to a single element for 4 seconds. This effect rotates through the elements available to your class in the following order. So it shows the order. The four elements that we have for Witch Doctor are going to be Cold, Fire, Physical, and Poison. So it's going to rotate through those. Now the way this is working with Jade, uh, you can just cast your dots and... As soon as it rotates to poison, the dots that are already cast and ticking on enemies, their damage bumps up automatically. I don't know if this is necessarily intended or not, but that is the way it's working right now. So you'll see Haunt ticking on an enemy for around 30 million-ish, and then this rotates around to poison, and then all of a sudden it's ticking for like 70 or 80 million. Uh, because this is a damage multiplier that's on its own. It doesn't you know, it doesn't go into the same damage pool as, like, other elemental damage on your gear or anything like that. So 185% extra damage as a multiplier is insane. Um, so it's pretty crazy. You can basically soul harvest. You'll see me soul harvesting for, like, 4 billion at times. You want to try to make sure you get to soul harvest at least once, 
while this is rotated into poison if you can and even just casting haunt on an enemy that's already haunted with the new two-piece bonus that alone will crit for like 700 million or so at times so that's pretty crazy damage um, most of the time what you can do is like soul harvest while the poison buff is up you get to soul harvest one more time before it rotates back around to poison and then soul harvest to kind of do it that way one more thing to keep in mind is they changed fetish sycophants to take on the element type of your highest element on your gear so currently my highest element is poison so they're supposed to be taking on poison damage now this effect from the convention of elements doesn't affect what kind of fetishes you get uh, with the belt or the passive at all it's not going to change them to fire physical cold or poison because this effect doesn't actually show up on your character sheet it, it just takes what it goes on your sheet from your gear so currently poison is my highest so that you're going to see the fetishes with little green daggers to kind of state that they're poison but it's actually not converting their damage to poison currently all the fetishes from the passive and the belt are still physical damage right now it seems to be bugged so they're not actually changing the graphic changes but the damage itself does not change so when this rotates around to physical damage you'll see the uh, considerable bump up in damage to the fetishes from the belt uh, and you're not going to see that when they're when it rotates around to poison so uh, we'd have a little bit more damage even if they were getting the benefit from poison because we're getting that that buff from the bracers as well as far as legendary gems go you definitely want to run bane of the trapped because you're going to be slowing everything with haunt so you get a lot of damage out of that i like gem of efficacious toxin you get 10% damage from the rank 25 ability, and also the poison effect is going to be bumped up by the poison damage on your gear. And when you soul harvest, uh, it'll actually deal the damage from this gem instantly as well, along with haunt and your locust swarm. And then I've got Gogok of Swiftness for more cord on reduction. You could also run Gem of the Powerful there if you wanted to, uh, right here, the Band of the Powerful Gem if you want that's up to you i think the extra cdr is probably better overall so we're gonna do a level 47 greater rift i know that's not terribly impressive or anything that's the highest that i've done so far and even in the 47 i died something like seven or eight times but we're still able to do it with plenty of time so you can kind of look at that and be like okay if i actually played you know perfectly and didn't die at all which would be possible with the rift that i did how quickly i'd be able to do it and the damage is there to do up into the 50s very easily but it just comes down to staying alive and playing the class correctly with the changes to spirit walk and that's something that i'm going to need a decent amount of practice with to do it really well so i edited out a lot of the uh, like death timers and stuff just so that this video wasn't like 35 minutes long more than anything so the mic's going to be off for the gameplay portion of the video guys i hope you enjoy it i'm going to put a video up hopefully with uh, some 50 plus footage in the next few days that's my plan anyways i'm going to just have to do some testing and find the right riffs and that kind of thing so anyways guys as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you next time